Ladies, the January Carl, and today we're talking shoes. Everything you need to know about what should be your essential shoe wardrobe, what to cull, and what to keep. So down there are all the shoes I'm gonna cull, and up here is my quite extensive shoe wardrobe. But I've laid them all out in category, because what I wanna show you is the category of shoe that I think is important in any woman's wardrobe. And then we're also going to be through the show showing you how to style things up so they work. So I have to start by explaining, I don't have the thinnest legs. Finding the right shoe to make my legs look thinner and more shapely has been my ultimate goal. So if you have really skinny legs and really thin ankles, your ability to wear flats, to wear kitten heels, to wear stilettos is so easy, whereas that's a challenge for me. And equally challenging for you might be a very heavy shoe that might be on trend, which I would find great because it will slim down and give more shape to my leg. I don't really have an ankle, they just go straight down. I've got quite a sort of chunky calf. It's been a challenge for me to find the most flattering shoe. And also because I have a very long body, and very short legs. I'm always looking at shoes that will give my legs extra height. So if you're long-legged and short-bodied, you might not need the amount of heel I'm talking about to put you back in proportion, but you might wish it if you want to feel taller. All right, so I'm gonna start with key essentials. We all, ladies, have these in our wardrobe trainers. And for me, I always have a trainer that I use to work out and I only use it to work out. I'm not the kind of woman who's a sort of cool Shoreditch chick who runs around in a pair of trainers because they are too round toed and too high up for me to feel they give me anything other than a rather thick leg. And I look at those girls who wear those floaty dresses to the calf and they wear a trainer and I think, mm, I can't do that look. But when I'm wanting that trainer day, I love what looks like a plimsoll, but there is a bit of extra in it. And I think every woman too should have a white trainer inspired shoe that she wears with kind of floaty dress in the summer. And this is the one I wear. It's French Connection. They did it last year. And I know this year they've got one similar. They had one which had an inset in it and they had one which was really flat. But this with an ankle length dress for me is a way I feel I can do chill, pare down, timeless dressing. So I love those. You all know my Zara favorites and some of you got them in the sale, but what I love about this shoe is I only ever wear it, I've got a good example of how I'm wearing it today, is I only ever wear it with a wide trouser that goes over the back of it and then around the front pops out a bit of white, which I think is fresh summer or winter with anything and actually makes an outfit for me far cooler that might have been a classic piece in my wardrobe. I've got a few things that are classics and as soon as I wear these with them, they feel a much cooler look. It's a way for women 40 to 60 to feel cool and all the girls under 40 know the look anyway. Then I have, when I'm wearing my sort of crop trouser, I still am wearing these stellar, really high platform platforms. When they came out about four years ago, they were like the coolest trend. And now to me in my wardrobe, they're a classic and they're unbelievably comfortable. We're gonna try and find you dupes for the expensive shoes that I'm showing you so that you, if you're inspired, you want that in your wardrobe, you can try and find one similar. A uh, boot for me is an interesting thing because there's been a fashion recently to have boots this height and what I feel always with a boot this height is it will cut off and go to the thicker part of my calf when I put it on. And it's not so flattering for me to wear with a dress. So I always wear those underneath a wide leg trouser. But if you want a boot that you can wear with a dress and you want a kind of ankle boot, I always believe an ankle boot that will go underneath your ankle because then the narrowest part of your ankle is gonna show here instead of cutting you off at that slightly higher calf thing and actually foreshortening the length of your legs. This elongates your leg. Always match the tight to the boot. So for me, if I'm going to wear um, this gray one which sits slightly above that thinnest part of my ankle. I would rarely do it. I might do it with an ankle length dress, but I would have a gray tight underneath. So it would be seamless, that transition between the boot and my leg. I think that's really key when you're looking at shoes. I've got a pair of Massimo Dutti here. I wore these when I went to Utah and I just know I have them for life. Um, I haven't worn cowboy boots for many years. Wear them under jeans. 
I've got a classic round-toed black, slight mini platform, and I wear these with black skinny jeans. It's a look I did years ago. I haven't worn these for quite a long time. They're from Prada, they're about 10 years old. But because they're Napa um, leather, they really, really last, and they were expensive, but I've had them for 10 or 15 years, and I used to wear them a tremendous amount. You can't really tell. Uh, and that's why I think sometimes to invest in some of the classics I'm talking about to think, okay, would I invest money in that piece and what's my throwaway fashion shoe? I've got these last summer and I'm going to talk about summer shoes later, but it was amazing how many dresses I put this with, but I found these made a lot of my slightly more boring clothes seem cool again. And because it was cut low, it gave me a really nice ankle and elongated my leg. They were a very good buy. So that's my sort of casual stuff. And then as we go up here, I'll very quickly go over a few points because you know I have an obsession with Prada brogues and Stella brogues, and I love them. And I do have silver and gold. If I'm especially wearing a real monotone outfit, like just navy, I like to pop the silver or gold at the bottom because it takes my look from being very quiet to having a little bit more individuality. So the original ones I used to wear, the Prada ones, they don't do these anymore, so you have to buy them in Vestier Collective or one of those secondhand sites. But there are lots on there and they're probably about 100 to 150 pounds and originally they were about 500 pounds. They're very expensive shoes. But I've had these, these are my oldest pair. I've had those for nine years and uh, I wore them every single day. And I do keep my shoes like this that are important to really look after and the leather is good. I do go and buy those old fashioned wooden shoe trees and keep them in because I might not wear them for three years, but maybe when I'm 65 and I can't wear the really, really high thing, I think I'll come back to those. There's a love-hate relationship with my audience with my Stellas, but I put them on and I feel happy. Now, when you wear a shoe like this, it's very interesting to know what sock do you wear because that puts a lot of people off wearing a shoe that is a different colour than black or brown or navy. So I try and match it. And if I'm wearing navy, I'll do a navy sock and then the shoe. But if I'm doing a bright colour or a mad print, then it can kill the colour or print to wear a black sock with it. But sometimes you can never find the colour of that pattern in a sock. So I go to Kos or and other stories, but I'll get a Lurex sock. I'll put those with the outfit. Let's say I've got a, a bright pink trouser on that's cropped. That will look much nicer than if I had the bright pink trouser with a black a sock and the silver shoes. But I might try and show you that in a sec. I did years ago wear these flat shoes and these were very beautiful. But I probably wore these every other day for about five years, you can tell there and I haven't even had them resold actually. These are from Chloe years and years ago. Probably if I look on the Zara website and I look on some really expensive shoe designers, that style is back in. So should one keep shoes that aren't in fashion but maybe still suit you? I've definitely gone away from wearing a really flat shoe, but I might go back to wearing that. I don't know when. My daughter the other day did say they're men's shoes, but I just love them. So I will hold on to them, but I did have another color and I've let go of that. Now, day shoes. I love this weird little collection here because sometimes I wear an outfit and because I have this kind of chunkier leg, I'm always looking for a, a wedge or a platform that will make my ankles look skinny. And there's three I do it here with. One of them is your classic wedge and this is closed toe so it allows me to wear tights with it and it's brown and black so I'll wear a black tight with it here. It's quite a narrow elegant wedge so when I wear a pretty dress in the winter um, that's a great shoe because I will show you a black stiletto in a minute but I would prefer this to a black stiletto. This is another shape, very much shape Roger Vivier does which I think is very 70s inspired of the sort of Ferragamo shoe. It's really a, a wedge and a platform have had a baby together because it keeps some thickness there. It looks quite clumpy, but it's a great shoe and I do always find occasion to wear it. My favorite shoe I have worn all this year when I've worn a dress is a Zara shoe actually. And it's been magnificent. They've gone with every single thing that I have worn as a winter dress, especially those black and white Zara dresses. But I wear a black tight with this. And when you're wearing open toe, and a black tight. Really make sure, I, I prefer this look, but it's up to you, that you either do a thick pop sock, these are from Woolford, and I usually, it's a silly little trick, but I pull down the line at the end, so I wear them slightly like that, which isn't uncomfortable, but it just means it becomes seamless, that look underneath. Uh, some of you might always wear them with bare legs, but I just like that continuity. The other favorite shoes I wore uh, were are these, but I've only worn them twice, but I do love them, and I think, 
how I found it difficult to wear them originally is I couldn't find a tight exactly that colour and I'm very angled that way but they are when they're in the wash but I'll just show you if I'm wearing a crop trouser I'll wear these these are from Falk and they're tonally really good and I don't mind that that sock is popping out because I just love that colour together and it gives a richness to the shoe and if I wore a black tight with it it would just the contrast with that thick strap around my ankle would actually not be flattering if you have a really skinny leg, sometimes the contrast in the tight with the shoe can look fantastic, but I know as a fashion um, mode, I can't get away with it. Everyone should have a pair of black stilettos in their cupboard. I personally, even though they require more maintenance, prefer black suede over black leather, because I feel we can have an outfit on sometimes where if there's any shimmer in the top, having a you know, sort of black leather shininess uh, doesn't work so well. So I have for years bought these shoes which Prada do every season. Uh, this is the higher version, 13 centimeters, and there's one I think that's 10. And they are your classic black. But I then found from Zara this last season. And if you look at the last of that shoe, it's like they came from an identical lab. And the only difference is that this has a sort of shoe boot feeling but weirdly it's incredibly flattering when I wear a thick black tight and this line here because it's keeping a sense of nothing breaking it up before I get to the toe and that elongates your leg whereas if you wear you know black shoes that might have something across your ankle it's going to slightly break the kind of length of your leg so Zara always have great stilettos and they're, they're quite comfortable too. Heading towards summer, I'm gonna call these my transitional. I can wear them in summer or winter. All shoes you can, but some which really lean that way. So these are all by Robert Clergery. And what I do is when I get a bee in my bonnet, I really get a bee in my bonnet. This shade, which is unusual, is called a, what I call Sigold. To me, it's a classic metallic shoe. And a metallic shoe will save so many outfits because it goes with every single pattern, plane, and color. And if you think, oh my God, I don't have the shoes or something, this will just work by the position that it's metallic, it's got a bit of fun, and it's not clashing in a way with whatever pattern or color you might have going on with it. So that to me is, is a really key. I've got this in a few colors. I love this for summer uh, because I think that sort of beautiful, cool gray also goes with white, and I wear a lot of white in the summer, but I can wear it with many shades. The other thing is to have a pair of silver sandals. These are quite old Stella McCartney ones. They're a low ankle strap, so when I wear it, I don't feel it cuts off my foot totally. But I think for me, I want to have that elongation from here to there. I don't want to cut off my ankle right here. Uh, they're quite comfortable. It's not too thin a heel for me, and I wear them with lots of summer dresses when I want to be elegant, but a, a little bit cool too. A nude stiletto. You know, there are cheap stilettos, which can be comfortable, but very rarely. And then you ones you spend money on, if you find a make that suits you. But this is the only time I quite like patent. You know, I'm wearing a summer dress and it kind of requires that slightly sexy stiletto look. I would do new because I'm, I'm scared in stilettos. The heel is quite thin, so I just want it to be as invisible as possible, but supporting me and supporting my leg. These I've worn tremendously, Robert Clergerie, but raffia is another neutral to consider having in your wardrobe because raffia shoes are even more neutral than a nude shoe or a silver or gold shoe because they literally are just like that lovely summer straw handbag. And if you can find a raffia shoe, which is a bit of a heel, something quirky, you've got to look after it because if they get wet, that, that, that's an issue. But I bought these eight years ago from Robert Pleasure. Having an animal print shoe is like having a neutral. It's another way. So having silver or gold, raffia or animal print. You've seen me wear these a lot there from Prada. That's a real classic 1940s shape that Ferragamo did. And I kind of love the elegance of this. I like the fact that it's below my ankle, so it's not cutting off my ankle. It gives my ankle room to breathe. This shoe has saved me. Saved me. Like if I go on holiday, I'll take this shoe and a flat and a pair of flip-flops in the summer. This is another mad purchase. So these are kind of shoes where you might see an incredibly mad shoe and think in the sale, let me get it because I'll never buy it full price. And I did that with these. I bring them out the weirdest times. They have this cornflower blue. So with burgundy, they look beautiful. They're incredibly high. I mean, like my highest shoe in my cupboard. Lila, of course, since the age of 12, was obsessed with these shoes because they made her nearly my height. And 
They are weirdly comfortable and unfortunately it does make me six foot three or six foot four. So when I'm around certain people, I wouldn't be wearing them, but they bring joy to my life. I'd nearly have these framed. So this is about wearing black pop socks or not. I'm gonna show you now some colors that are very strong this spring summer and it's bright pink with a kind of uh, more bougainvillea. So in the summer, I might wear a metallic neutral if I'm going out in the evening because this will go with nearly any color and it's fun and it's flattering on my toe and it gives me support and I can run around and the crop doesn't make my legs look shorter because I've got a spindly heel underneath. In the summer, I could also consider just wearing a plain gold on its own, and that would work fine like that. Let's just take a classic. You only have black pop socks in your cupboard, so it's cold and you think I'll put a black pop sock on underneath. So I'm just gonna do one with that, and I'll just put a plain black shoe on. There's nothing wrong with it, but it sort of just stops the outfit flow going on. So instead, on this, Foot. I'm going to put a colour which is tonally nicer, it's a burgundy sock, and I'm going to go instead for a little bit of fun gold. So even though it's a higher shoe, you just see that there's that little softness in the burgundy and the gold, as opposed to the harshness of the black against the colour, and for me the flatness of that shoe, although I'm looking, putting it on now, loving that shoe. And then in the evening what I might do is I might take these shoes here, which are a burgundy velvet. And because I've got a burgundy sock underneath, they look really lovely. Whereas if I was still cold and I wanted to wear those in the day and I wore them with a black sock, it just takes away the richness of that shoe and the flow of my whole body with that outfit. Whereas the burgundy just gives so, so much of a nicer color. It brings a richness together and the color of the shoe elongates the leg further. Okay, this example is about the right type of shape of shoe or boot that you're gonna wear with something that's a midi dress. So I'm using the Joseph one. I don't actually own a midi dress because I find them really unflattering on me, but if I have some which are not quite ankle skimming, it's very important that I don't cover my ankle, like I was saying. So the wrong length boot for me to wear, to be honest, is this lovely Prada boot. I just feel that it's not so flattering because it's going to the thinnest part of my leg and covering it. My better alternative, if I was wearing a little boot, would be an ankle boot. This is more round toed and lower, but the ankle boot which comes to just below my ankle like that, because then you see the thinness of my ankle as opposed to the thickness of that. And then if I had this dress at this length, it wouldn't look so terrible for me as that, which I feel shortens my leg, and that which I feel elongates my leg. I think actually in this instance, because it's all black, the stiletto works um, and there's nothing cutting off my ankle. So it's a little bit sexy and it's just a classic, but the art for me is having a thick tight so you don't see the difference between where my leg is and the shoe. It's just like one unit. Summertime now, I've still got my leopard dress. I've taken it to ankle length and many of you might have a sort of sandal you could wear with this, but I feel there's something when you have a kind of sophisticated dress you want to dress down for the summer, bring it into your summer wardrobe. But if you wear a sandal, that juxtaposition is too strong. So I have done all summer, last summer, but I will do this summer, this white trainer from French Connection. And even though it comes up quite high, if I have it as an ankle dress, I don't mind that little bit showing because I just feel it's a little bit cool. The worst way for me to wear something if it was this length is that because it really cuts off my ankle. The dress feels casual and cool, I can run around and timeless, and that's what I want clothes to feel. Okay, ladies, a classic look for me is a white shirt and a cropped black trouser. And I think this is where I was saying, you can wear a shoe that takes the outfit to another level or dresses it down. So some of you might run around all day in a pair of trainers, and that, to me, just doesn't work. It really doesn't work because I just feel it's round toed, it's not flattering, the color is too strong. And if you're sort of 20, 30 year old girl in Shoreditch, great, but you probably wouldn't wear these trousers. The alternative would be you just go for a very conservative, nice black shoe, which this, you know, I love, but I know that for me, this kind of shoe, and it is smart, 
and I feel sophisticated in it. So there's nothing wrong with a pair of plain black shoes, but if your whole outfit is going to be quite monotone, so I'm just wearing here a navy coat with my sort of navy, navy trousers, um, I feel I'm very, very conservative. And that's why the joy of my brogues just change outfits up. So suddenly the outfit is more fun. It's still monotone. I've got the navy and the white, but there's just something appealing now in my outfit, which gives me a sense of a little edge without trying too hard or having pattern and lots of color in the combination. So that's why I love these so much. But talking a little bit about the kind of socks that help make or break an outfit, if you're wearing um, this kind of look in the summer, um, you might want a white trainer. In the winter, you might want a black shoe or think you want a black shoe, so you might put on a black sock. So when I put that on, there's two things to me that are wrong with it, even though there's black in these trousers. The contrast between those two is very, very harsh, and I don't think immensely flattering. And the shoe itself to me is too patenty and too smart and not chilled for this outfit. So there's a style issue and there's a color contrast issue for me. If I instead go for a different color sock like this one I've taken from And Other Stories, it's softer, a bit of shimmer, uh, still keeps my feet warm and it can kind of go with the white. This trainer though is just for me a little bit too pointed for these trousers because I just want a softness coming out the bottom because they're so wide legged. So it wasn't quite right. I used to do that a lot until I discovered my bloody Zara trainers. I hope they do them this season. Because what I liked about this, and it's such a nuance of detail, is that because they're voluminous trousers, don't be too pointy underneath. Keep that roundness at the front. And because these are leather trainers, you've got quite a smart look. So you could do this, you know, going out to quite a smart event because I just think it gives a pop to the pink it gives you enough stack so that you feel you're in a three inch shoe and you have a flow to the trousers, but it really shows the trousers off well. And that's what a shoe should do, show your outfit off to its best. So some of the ones I'm getting rid of, why I'm getting rid of them, is because when I've fallen in love with something, it's been a duplicate. I've got a couple of pair of Prada wedges that, um, I didn't get rid of before, but I think the navy and the yellow reminds me of Ikea, and I want to get rid of them. Um, I've got some old products I'm getting rid of. I love these silver boots. They are from a fantastic brand, I have to say, called Camilla Efric, and she's amazing. But I, for me, if these had worked for me, okay, I just bought them because they were silver, um, I would have had it that high, so my thing would pop out, and that heel would be thick. Then they would live in my wardrobe. So Camilla, please, can you make a shoot for me? Silver, with that on the back, thicker heel, and going below my ankle, because that's what we want, ladies, for ev can I just say for everyone, I hate ankle boots that cover your ankle. It's just my bet more, actually, for any kind of leg. I did this thing that I love those shoes from French Connection so much, and they, I want a second pair, and I bought a pair, but they, I bought them in a 41, and I'm 40. They don't fit me, gotta get rid of them. Okay, that's it gives you an idea and an inspiration, I hope, of what shoe could be in your shoe cupboard. And gives you an opportunity to really go in and, and like that lovely Japanese lady with her book, look and think, when have I last worn these shoes? Do they have a place in my life? Um, are they just taking up cupboard space? Have the bare minimum that you need to fill those categories and then have a few extra spares, you know, depending on what your budget allows. But things that look tired, get rid of them um, and just slowly you could be in an opportunity to rebuild a shoe wardrobe that's the perfectly utilised shoe wardrobe. Thanks for watching. Bye.